So our Raspberry Pi, Malcolm, is nestled safely in the really big coffee company's building. We just performed our DNS spoofing attack. It was great. It was a man in the middle attack, but I feel like we can do even better. And as I was surfing the dark web, looking at the dark web menu, I found just the perfect recipe that I think pairs perfectly with the Raspberry Pi. It's a man in the middle attack with ARP spoofing. Now this one is unique in that it will give us complete control over Bob's internet traffic. And that's exactly what I want to do. Now let's get into this ARP spoofing thing. What is that? You may recall that ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol, is used to find the layer 2 address or MAC address of the device associated with the IP address. So when Bob here needs to communicate out to the internet, we know that he has to go through the default gateway, this router. And Bob already knows the router's IP address, 10.42.1.1, but he needs the MAC address associated with that IP address. And if he doesn't already know that information, if it's not already in his ARP cache, he'll then use ARP to find out. He'll use an ARP broadcast, which will broadcast to everyone on his network, hey, who does 10.42.1.1 belong to? And in that situation, the router will go, oh, hey, hey, it's me, it's me. You can send it to me. Here's my MAC address. And then he replies with his MAC address. I always think back to uh, when I first learned ARP, and it was watching Jeremy Chara's uh, CSENT video, he always described it as like a dog barking like, ARP, 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 asking everyone whose IP address this is. <laughs> it's always stuck with me. So thank you, Jeremy. So we can see how Bob's computer found out how to reach the router. What we're going to do is slide Malcolm right in the middle there and... Uh, kind of mess up that relationship. And of course we're going to use ARP spoofing or poisoning. So let's let's do it real quick. It's it's really cool. <laughs> like stinking cool. Okay, so here's our mission with the ARP spoofing. I need to convince Bob that Malcolm is the router. And I need to convince the router that Malcolm is Bob. So let's get going. So first things first, let's see if Bob has the right ARP entry for router 1 currently. All right, so we see that right here we're 10.42.1.1. He's got this MAC address, which, aha, uh -huh, does match up to router 1, so he's good right now. Let's check router 1. So I know the IP address of Bob is 1042.1100, and the hardware address we have is right there. It matches up. So right now, router 1 definitely knows the real Bob, and Bob definitely knows the real router 1. Let's mess that up. All right, so the first task we have is to tell Bob that we are the router. Let's go ahead and do that. So right now, we are actively sending ARP replies to Bob saying, hey, we are the router. Let's see if Bob believes us. And would you look at that? The, uh, the MAC address for 1042.1.1 is no longer matched up to the router 1. It's now our little Malcolm here. <laughs> Good job, Malcolm. Now let's do the same thing to the router. So now we're sending ARP replies to the router saying, hey, Bob is actually Malcolm. So let's check the router and see if that worked. Aha, uh -huh. see, so look at that now. So before, it was matched up to our dear Bob. But now, it's matched up to our <laughs> Mr. Malcolm here. So right now, Bob believes that Malcolm is the router. The router believes that Malcolm is Bob. Malcolm is in the middle. <laughs> Every packet is going through Malcolm. Now, a fun way to see this happening is uh, there's two programs I want to use. One is going to show us all the websites that Bob will visit, and one will kind of pull up all the images from the websites he's going to. Let's go ahead and have fun with that real quick. So let's go to a website. Let's, uh, let's try Anthony Sequeira's website, ajsnetworking.com. All right, so we're sniffing it. We're seeing it with our URL snarfing. Let's see if some pictures come in. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> So right now, we are looking at all of Bob's traffic. We can see that, um, we can see every website he's going to, and we can even see some pictures coming in. So right now, we, we are the middleman. Everything Bob does, we see. We have pretty much slid Malcolm right here, giving us complete control over all of Bob's internet traffic. Now, now that we have Malcolm in the middle, we can do so much more than just spy on Bob. We can do packet injection where we actually craft malicious packets that we can send to Bob. Or we can do session hijacking. Because like most web applications, they'll use a temporary session token uh, when a user logs into the website. And they'll use that token so the, web, the, so the user doesn't have to keep logging in on every page. Well, as a man in the middle, Mr. Malcolm can look at that token and use it himself and take actions on that site. So sites like uh, banks, he can make a quick withdrawal or a quick transfer. Now the majority of websites these days use um, SSL, making the website secure so we can't really see it. 
but we can do SSL stripping, forcing our local user Bob here to downgrade his session from HTTPS to HTTP so we can look at everything. And then we can take it a step further if we are super savvy. We can do SSL hijacking and HTTPS spoofing where we become a part of that secure communication and we can see everything that's happening. And both the website and the user think, hey, they're perfectly secure, but we're right there looking at everything. Well, in this nugget, we saw how we could uh, put Malcolm in the middle <laughs> uh, with our man in the middle attack. We were able to trick Bob into thinking we were the router and we were able to trick the router into thinking we were Bob. It was awesome. And then we saw how we could look at all the network traffic and then also do some pretty malicious things in the process. Anyhow, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.